The need for a comprehensive approach to secure Europe's external borders is what we are here to debate. And yet, the approach cannot be comprehensive nor effective without physical border barriers. But the EU won't fund that. Colleagues, frontier member states should not face the Russian threat alone, nor the Belarusian, Moroccan, Turkish. Helping them with IT and surveillance system is good, but not enough to delay and prevent migrants from entering illegally. If the Commission keeps refusing to change its mind, the Council and Parliament will have to force them to fund border barriers through, for example, the Integrated Border Management Fund. The comprehensive approach needed to secure Europe's borders it has to include funding of physical border barriers. Time to get the job done. This morning, Viktor Orban addressed this parliament and he said that we should stop migration because it causes violence against women, homophobia and anti-Semitism. And my colleagues here on the right applauded him loudly. And honestly, it makes me sick to hear even more applause and it makes me sick to hear the way that we talk about migrants nowadays. Because member states are so caught up in a race to make our borders tougher with more surveillance, more detention centers, and they talk about opt-outs. But instead, we should not ignore the fact that more people are dying. And last year was the deadliest year on record for migrants with nearly 8,600 deaths. Pushbacks and human rights violations are at our border and they are becoming a routine, also under Frontex Watch. Yes, we do have challenges, but making our borders more lethal won't help us solve them. Let's work on harmonized border management, legal pathways and a fair and efficient asylum procedure. Thank you very much. We've heard these speeches very often, also from Madame von der Leyen. We want more legal pathways. But the situation is, there have already been millions of people who entered the EU illegally and they have not been able to integrate. So, Ms. von der Leyen wants millions to enter legally. How many would you, more would you like in your, in your country? I think there's two things we have to do. First, you have to make sure that asylum seekers always can enter here if they are in need of protection. So you need to have uh, procedures for them to come. If we're gonna make our borders tougher, people will find other routes that people that are in need. And it's gonna only be more dangerous we're going to push people in the hands of smugglers. On the other hand, we can work on more uh, labor migration. All the, the visa procedures, everything we do on labor migration is so divided. So if we first harmonize that, then we can actually see how we can attract talent and make sure that people integrate well. Yeah. So don't give us this rubbish about the need of educated immigration, as we heard yesterday. We don't need your doctors, we don't need your engineers. Take them, take them all and pay for them. We don't need them. You know why? Because there is a zero terrorist attacks in Poland. Why? Because, because there is no illegal migration in Poland. Don't give me these arguments about the populism, because this is a fact. This is your data from Eurostat. Dear leftists, it's been seven years of your criticism and attacks on Poland and obviously a rule of law is one of the excuses and look at the look at the chamber where this seven years of your criticism led you to it's more people watching us from the gallery than MEPs taking a part in this discussion well done well done that is the symbol of how many people cares about your accusations full accusations and needs excuses as a rule of law to attack Poland. So I'll tell you what the real reason and the real pain for you is to criticize us. Look at that. Poland as a leader, as a leader it's here on red, as a leader with our GDP after COVID. That's data. Unemployment in Poland, one of the lowest in European Union. It's your data, your stuff, not ours. Uh, if you want to feel free, if you want to feel safe, come to Poland, also your data. Poland is here, Germany is here. One of the safest place in European Union. These are data, these are official documents, and that's how it is in Poland. It's your data, not ours, this is Eurostat. So if you want to feel safe, be like Poland. If you are looking for low unemployment, be like Poland. If you love freedom, be like Poland. 
Russia and Belarus weaponized migrants against Europe's uh, frontier. Yet the resolve of Finland, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland holds strong. Border barriers work. Unfortunately, the Commission believes physical barriers don't efficiently improve border management and refuses to fund them. That's a security problem. They believe EU funds are better spent, I'm not joking, on circus workshops to integrate military-age male migrants and empty parties in the metaverse. Every year, hundreds of thousands of migrants are told to return. Everybody knows it, they don't, because their countries won't even take them back. Greece wants sanctions against those countries, an EU deportation mechanism. We should support them. It should, should be in this report and use the sanctions to pay for physical border barriers. The Commission should immediately inform uncooperative countries that for every migrant threat they refuse, 20,000 euros will be deducted from the EU funds they receive. And for every weaponized illegal migrant entering Europe, it will cost them 200,000 euros. Some of you talk about Fortress Europe like it's a bad thing. I say fund that wall and make Morocco, Turkey, Syria, and Pakistan pay for it. Lola, Philippine, Gaetan, Olivier, Barbara, Simone, Nadine. These French individuals were slain by illegal immigrants. They would still be alive if our borders had been properly secured. Each year, more than 300,000 illegally enter our homes in Europe, often taking advantage of national solidarity. This is driving up crime and sexual assault statistics, often serving as a prime recruitment ground for drug trafficking and jihadism. What we need is not reform, but a break. To stop this madness, we know the solutions. We must cease funding NGOs that assist smugglers. We need to work together to dismantle human trafficking networks. We must consistently push back illegal vessels using Frontex. We need to establish a naval military blockade in the Mediterranean. We must fund the walls requested by many countries. We should boost agreements with sending countries, as Georgia Maloney has done. Asylum rights should be rare, and we must change the return rules. Given the surge in migration, we need a threefold border, national, European, and in the countries of origin. It's urgent for Europe to stay European. Thank you. About three quarters in my country, the Netherlands and over, uh, everywhere in Europe um, of women um, have been at some point in their life, and that has been so for a very long time, a victim of uh, sexually inappropriate or uh, behavior or harassment. Um, I have been a victim of that and a lot of women in this house probably as well seeing the statistics. Your constant repetition that migrants are a main reason for that sort of behavior and crime is just spreading hate. Should I be afraid of all the white men born in Europe in this house? It's not me saying this, it's the official statistics from my country. To give you just a few figures, 70%. 70% of rapes that occurred in the streets of Paris were committed by foreigners. Also know that 60% of sexual assaults committed on public transport in the Paris region were also by foreigners. All the statistics demonstrate that there is an over-representation of foreigners in all acts of crime and delinquency in France. It's a fact. You may not like it, but the loose immigration policy you support endangers women by bringing in foreign predators, and it is our daughters and mothers who suffer the most as victims. Mr. Oetien. Yes, the European Union is about free movement. For this to be possible, we must regain control of our external border. With an expansion of Frontex, more cooperation with third countries, full implementation of the Migration Pact, and EU funding for border infrastructure. I would like to use my time actually to address some of the colleagues of this house and let me start with colleagues on the left. I very often hear you talk about the right to asylum but at the same time you are delaying efforts to difference, differentiate people with grounds for asylum and those 
who have not. I hear you talking about abolishing internal border controls, but at the same time, whenever EPP suggests that we need to take back control of our external borders, you are against. To some of the colleagues on the populist, populist far right side, you very often talk, talk about we need to stop illegal migration, but you also say no to EU cooperation on migration. Your aversion to the European Union trumps your desire to control migration with common measures. For the EPP, it is clear that the European Union must take control of our external border jointly. We need a bigger and stronger Frontex. And this cannot be guided by either abolish borders fantasies or that we cannot work together. We need to work together to have a strong Europe and a safe Europe. Thank you. The only thing the Popular Party and the Socialist Party have thought of is setting up a travel agency funded by us, providing charter flights, luxury hotels, and funds for beers. But now we know that in Catalonia, where I was born, 91% of rapists are foreign. The popular group adores Frontex simply because it's a European agency. However, Frontex is of no use if we don't begin mass deportations. Meloni has closed deals with Tunisia and Albania, reducing arrivals to Italy by 64%, and Hungary, without Frontex's assistance, has cut arrivals through the Balkans by 77%. Let's go. It's not about cash, but about willpower. Greece geographically forms the southernmost natural border of Europe and guards the Thermopylae for the entire European Union. Turkey, on the other hand, has been promoting the violent Islamization of Europe through illegal immigration for many years now. Simultaneously, it receives billions from us, supposedly to do the contrary. And I ask you, how long will we tolerate its dirty game? Considering the Middle East crises and the large businesses many NGOs have run for years, it is certain that among these rivers of illegal immigrants, there will be terrorist guards who will not hesitate to spill blood in Europe again. Really, have we forgotten what radical Islamists did at the Bataclan in France and the London Underground? And on the trains in Madrid, killing and injuring thousands of civilians? We have not forgotten. Frontex continuously sounds the alarm. Is anyone listening? See this year's strategic risk analysis. It alerts us to asymmetric hybrid threats that endanger European security. Regarding the evolution of cross-border organized crime, we remain mere spectators. We need to act now. We must provide Frontex with more personnel, modern equipment, and rapid intervention capabilities to support member states. It has been known for a short time that smugglers deliberately sink the boats with illegal immigrants themselves in order to take advantage of the favorable maritime law. At the same time, MEPs are acting as if they are collaborators of the smugglers. And what do we do about all this? Nothing. We are too late to seriously protect our borders. Not one more illegal immigrant should set foot on the territory of the European Union. We desire a Europe of nations, not one of migrants. Mr. Laszlo, the floor is yours. The murder of Philippines, the Solingen terrorist attack, and the Essen attack rightly provoke anger among Europeans. And it is just that they repeatedly ask the question, what are these people doing in Europe? And why is the Union doing nothing about it? Fabrice Legerie, my colleague, led Frontex for seven years. He wanted to protect the Union's external borders, but he had no authority to do so. The European Commissioner asked him to ensure that Frontex supports immigration. In Hungary, we did the reverse. In 2015, we built a border fence to protect Hungary and the European Union. Since then, we have spent 2 billion euros on border protection. As a response, the European Parliament required the suspension of EU funds to Hungary. The Commission did it. It took legal action against us and fined Hungary 200 million euros for not allowing illegal migrants in and more. They demand that we change Hungarian law and allow illegal immigrants in. You know, if we were wrong, it'd be easier. 
I wish crime hadn't increased. I wish the Brussels, Bataclan and Nice attacks hadn't happened. I wish the Philippines and many other victims were alive today. We will defend Hungary and transport as many illegal migrants to Brussels as the European Commission requires us to accept. Thanks. So, honorable members, the security of Europe's external borders is a key priority for the Commission. It's at the heart of our migration and security policies. It is essential for safeguarding freedom of movement within the Schengen area, but also it's linked to the way that we want to live, secure and free. I am very proud of what we have collectively managed to achieve in this area during the last five years. Over these last five years, our capacity to strengthen our borders has been tested. It has been tested in a way that was unprecedented. It has been tested in Evros, in Lampedusa, in the borders of Poland, and Latvia, Lithuania, with Belarus. It was tested in Ceuta. It was tested in the Canary Islands. It was tested in the Finnish-Russian borders. And it was tested in Cyprus. In response to all these challenges and difficulties and threats, we have acted decisively both on the ground where this crisis happened, but also on the regulatory front, where regulatory improvements were made that would serve many generations to come. Let me start with our decision to adopt the Schengen Borders Code that will adopt all these robust checks at our external borders during crisis, such as pandemics or hybrid threats. And of course, the Migration and Asylum Pact our flagship regulatory achievement that will reinforce our preparedness to assure that in the future any given situation could be handled by appropriate regulatory response. This will include this new screening regulation establishing clear and common rules for identifying, registering and assessing the health and security risks of individuals entering the EU. A crisis regulation that further strengthens our response and of course the entry exit system that will track visa exempt and short stay visa holders movements helping us monitor overstays. Following that the European Travel Information and Authorization System, also known as ETIAS, will pre-screen visa exam travelers before they enter the Schengen area, assessing risks related to migration, security and health. And only yesterday we adopted the final piece of this overall puzzle, the digitalization of travel documents. This would help us streamline border processes, allowing travelers to submit documents in advance, facilitating the mobility of people and goods. As a result of all this, our external border would not be just a geographical line. It would be a place where our regulatory might will be evident and will apply. When someone arrives at Europe's external borders, something must happen. You cannot just cross in. And we have now built, with the help of these cows, this robust, cohesive, holistic regulatory response that would precisely help us to cope. And to support these initiatives, we shall also have provided unprecedented financial aid to our member states. The budget for border management in the European Union has more than tripled over the last three financing periods. With EU funding, for instance, we have facilitated the purchase of nearly 1,500 pieces of equipment, 145 land transport vehicles, the processing of 168,000 digital visa applications, and we have funded significant investments to make our EU information systems interoperable. That means that we'll provide border guards across the European Union in real time with vital information. Of course, this is only one part of the EU response. There is the other one, equally important which is the operational support on the ground with our law enforcement agencies Frontex and Europol. Frontex is building a standing core 
of 10,000 officers to support border management, oversee returns from member states to third countries, and help third countries protect their borders. Currently, Frontex has 19 operations ongoing at our external border, with major efforts along the EU external eastern land borders and the Mediterranean Sea. Frontex expansion has been impressive over the last five years, and we are ensuring that this growth respects human rights and operations are fully compatible with the model of society we stand for. Our president, Ursula von der Leyen, has proposed tripling the standing corps to 30,000 officers as part of the next financial periods. This will enhance our ability to respond to hybrid threats with the active participations, we hope, of all our member states. Europol is also playing a key role in that respect. Currently, Europol has deployed experts at our external border in 10 of our member states. We have Europol's Migrant Smuggling Center that supports member states' investigations and increases cooperation among law enforcement agencies that helps them prosecute smugglers and networks. And of course, we need an even stronger role for Europol to combat smuggling. The legislative proposal on the table to enhance Europol's support to prevent and combat smuggling should be swiftly adopted. And of course, let us not forget the third element of security in our borders, which clearly has to do with the building of constructive, comprehensive, win-win partnerships with third countries of origin and transit, based on shared interest and covering a wide area of policy, coming from security, investment, economic cooperation, energy, trade, and yes, Erasmus scholarships too. We will mobilize everything we have, everything we have to help these countries of origin and transit, to provide better conditions for their people, to have better lives there, instead of putting their lives in the hands of the smugglers. Positive results are being already evident along the central Mediterranean route, particularly through our cooperation with Tunisia and Egypt. The technical dialogue with Libya is also yielding significant results and we are strengthening cooperation with Mauritania and Senegal, providing these countries with resources for rescue at sea and border management. Finally, in the Western Balkans, Frontex is increasingly present through new status agreements with these third countries. These status agreements allow Frontex to deploy border management capabilities on the ground in new key areas of these routes. And of course, when it comes to fighting smugglers, last year we launched the Global Alliance to Counter Migrant Smuggling, a key initiative for prevention, response and protection. We now have already concluded these anti-smuggling operational partnerships with Morocco and Tunisia, and we are working on all other routes. Honorable members, let me conclude by saying that this impressive amount of work along both the operational and the regulatory track has made pro significant progress in securing our borders. Europe's borders are not unguarded. And as we modernize our capacities through digital systems and as we strengthen our partnerships, we at the same time continue to remain vigilant and we continue to push for a stronger, more agile response to evolving threats at our external borders. And we, of course, count on the precious help of the European Parliament to support us. Thank you.